Hey guys, Burnished here with TGN. Today I'm bringing you a Disc Priest PvP guide. And we're going to start out with the talents and the glyphs that you're going to be need for needing for PvPing action. This is for like uh, BGs and arenas, you know, all that good stuff. So let's get started. Okay, first bit, you want to get pretty much all the talents in tier 1 of the Discipline Tree. Mental Agility, Twin Disciplines and Improved Powered Shield. Why? Because they give you great benefits for the talent. For example, increased healing from twin disciplines, uh, reduced mana cost, and increased absorption by the powered shield. You know, those three are great. Okay, on tier 2, you do not want to get Evangelism and Archangel, simply because they're PvE talents, and you have to cast Smite or Holy Fire to be able to get the effect from them and you can't be doing that in PvP because it makes you susceptible to interrupts, susceptible to silences, pretty much it can just any time that you're casting smite or holy fire it's time that you're not healing and that is very very detrimental to healers especially in PvP and the effect given to you by Evangelism and Archangel isn't really uh, that good for you to be using smite and holy fire instead of healing so definitely do not get those however next you want to get inner sanctum which uh... spell damage taken is reduced by six percent while in inner fire which is the one that also increases your armor so if you're paying defensively then this is great to have on because that means spellcasters will hit you for lefts and so will melee and um... It'll also increase the movement speed bonus from your inner will, so if you're trying to get away from someone, if you're trying to kite, then this is definitely a bonus as well. Okay, next, you can you can get Soul, soul Warding. This is one of the optional talents. Um, soul Warding basically reduces the cooldown of your powered shield so that you cast it, and then it's instantly off cooldown. The problem is, if you don't have this talent, then you have to wait about 3 seconds before you can put a shield up again. This is fine in 2s, I would say, because you don't generally have to shield someone that often. In 3s, you could get away with not using it, but 5s and BGs, you really want to have this uh, as, as a talent, because because you're going to be shielding people constantly so they don't die so you really do not want a cooldown on your power chill bun okay tier 3 you want renewed hope which is which increases the critical effect chance of your pretty much all your heals by 10% for those people afflicted with a weakened soul effect which is when uh, I'll show you here when you put power chill on someone they get weakened soul which means they can't be shielded again and it also does it uh, if they're blessed with your grace effect which you'll get later on in the talent tree so definitely get two for this if not because of this effect because what it leads into because it has the little arrow there okay next is power infusion definitely get this as well because it increases your casting speed by 20% and reduces the mana cost so this is extremely helpful if you need to heal someone up quickly and have you're having to spam flash of lights it bait it flash is it flash flash heal? Sorry, I'm thinking of paladins. It basically means that you're gonna heal a lot, a lot, a lot faster, and also reduce the amount of mana that you're using. So if I use this now, you know, pretty fast heals, and also it's not costing as much mana as it would, which is definitely good if you're trying to heal someone really quickly. So definitely a must. Okay, next is atonement. When you deal damage with a smite or holy fire, pretty much. If you see a talent involving smite or holy fire, you kind of want to stay clear of that because you won't be using smite or holy fire in PvP generally. And uh, yeah, it basically heals people for half the damage or the full damage that you do with your smite um, or holy fire near them, and it's only an eight-yard range. So if you're attacking someone who is being hit by a melee, then yes, that would work, but the likelihood that's going to happen is slimming, especially if you're playing with a spellcasting partner and you're not really going to be using Smite or Holy Fire as I've said. Okay, next you want to get Inner Focus, which is on a 45 second cooldown, it's Insta, and it reduces the mana cost of your next heal, besides Penance, by 100% and increases its crit chance by 25%. So basically what this means is I can cast this, heal myself, and it has a higher rate of critting. It didn't crit there, but it had a higher rate of critting than if I used it right now. And also zero mana cost, which is amazing in times of need. If you're not going to get it for those effects, again, there's going to be a talent later on that will greatly improve um, this effect. So definitely, definitely get this. This is possibly one of your most important spells as a Discipline Priest. So definitely get it. 
Okay, next is uh, tier, what are we up, tier 4, and this is Rapture. You want to get this 3 out of 3 pretty much indefinitely, because when your Power Shield is completely absorbed or dispelled, you get 7% of your total mana, and um, this can only occur once every 12 seconds, but if you can time this, if you can time this pretty well, then it is absolutely insane. It means you can keep as much mana as possible on your character, which is definitely what you need considering we have the worst mana, uh, we're the worst mana efficient healer in the game at the moment. Okay, next is Borrowed Time, grants 14% spell haste um, after casting Powered Shield. Why not? It just basically means that you can cast Powered Shield on someone and then heal them really quickly. And this combined with uh, Power Infusion, it just means a very, very, very quick heal. Okay, next is Reflective Shield. I don't have this. Um, you can get this, but it's pretty much pointless. It, it, it uh, causes, I think, 45% damage when it's maxed out of the damage that you absorb with your powered shield to be reflected back at the attacker and it causes no threat which you don't care about because you're doing pvp but this basically allows you to do damage to other people attacking you it's not that great of damage and um... it's just generally not the most amazing talent to get you can get it, you can mess around with it but it does pretty little damage in, in comparison to other things okay next is tier 5 and here is where what I've been saying like oh stick around with this talent because you'll need it for later here we go strength of soul when you heal your when you heal a target with your with your heal greater heal or flash heal the duration of weakened soul debuff is reduced by 4 seconds so if I cast powered shield on myself then flash heal myself it goes from 12 seconds to 8 seconds instantly so this means if you keep on doing this you can put more shields on people and more shields equals less damage blah blah blah, blah. And it has an additional effect. In addition, when the caster, when you cast in a focus, you become immune to silences, interrupts, and dispel effects for five seconds. This is amazing. So basically, if you've got a DK and a warrior on you, and you really need to heal someone, you pop in a focus right away, and you start healing. They'll try to interrupt your heal and waste their interrupt, and that means you can heal even more. So this. If the enemy is stupid and don't realize that you've used in a focus, then that gives you about 10 seconds of free healing where they can't do anything to stop you, which is absolutely amazing in arena situations. So, definitely, 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 definitely get that because the two effects make it like the best talent in this tree. Or, hmm, second best probably. Okay, next is Divine Agis, which crit heals and all heals from Prairie of Healing, which you won't be using. So crit heals, create a, a shield absorbing 30% of the amount healed. So if I crit heal for 30k, like there, then I will get a, sh a Divine Agis shield for 10k. That is definitely not something to turn your nose at. It is really, really, really nice shield. It's about half of a power shield, and that's quite a lot, actually. You'd be surprised at how many times it can save people. So definitely get that. It also leads on to another your end talent. So you definitely want to get that for that reason as well. Okay, next is pain suppression, which is on a, a three minute cooldown, and it instantly reduces uh, a friendly target's threat by five percent. You don't care about that, but reduces all damage they take by forty percent for eight seconds. Definitely, 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 definitely because. If you can predict damage, so if you can see that a warrior has popped Colossus Smash and um, Recklessness, then you instantly put Pain Suppression on someone and they take 40% less damage, and that is quite a significant bit of damage. That means if a warrior hits you for 10k, they're gonna hit, they're actually going to hit you for about 6k, which is absolutely insane when you get to the higher numbers. Okay, and finally in the tier 5 is Train of Thought. You have a 50% chance, which becomes a 100% chance when you put 2 points in it. When you heal with greater heal to reduce the cooldown of your inner focus by five seconds, this is a really nice talent, especially if you use great heal. I, however, don't use great heal that much. I don't see it as being that useful in PvP situations. Uh, some disc priests may argue with me about that, but that's just my point of view. And um, so, if you do use great heal, definitely get this talent because if you can have inner focus on a lesser cooldown more frequently then that's amazing because inner focus will save you so many times because it basically means you can't be interrupted that combined with fake casting makes it very hard for people to stop your casting so that is again an amazing talent if you use great heal and it also has a thing with smite on the end but you don't need to worry about that okay tier six you have focused will 
When you're a victim of any damage greater than 10% of your health or critically hit by any non-periodic attack, you gain focus wheeling, uh, wheel, reducing all damage taken by 10%, lasting 8 seconds, stacking up to 2 times. So that's 20% rat damage reduction. This combined with pain suppression, for example, that's like 60% damage uh, reduction, I'm sure. Uh, mathematicians out there who love to work out the maths and wow, it probably won't be 60%, it'll probably be like something, I don't know. But yeah, definitely amazing talent to have for PvP because it stops damage and, you know, that's pretty much the best thing ever. And next on tier... no, what is this tier? Yeah, tier 6 is Grace, your flash heal, great heal, heal, penance. Blesses the target with Grace, increasing um, all healing received by the priest from the priest by 8%. Sorry. This effect will stack up to three times. Effects last 15 seconds. So that basically means that you can cast penance on one person and get full three stacks of grace, and that increases the healing that they receive by 24% from you. That is pretty insane, considering that I do a flash heal of 15k without grace, and I just did a 20k. That is amazing amount of healing. That's 5k more healing. That's that's possibly an attack from someone. It's that insane. So you definitely need to add that as well. Uh, plus it mixes in with the other talent renewed hope and yeah so that is definitely a good talent to get and the last one is power word barrier this is to finish off your discipline tree this is your 31 pointer and it basically does the same effect of pain suppression but instead it re uh, reduces the damage taken by 25 percent and it makes um, a barrier as in an AOE thing so it can protect more than one person who are standing like who are standing in the barrier so if I create it now it creates a big dome and then you stand in it and then you receive less damage but when I walk out of it the buff disappears and then when I walk back in the buff reappears and it's basically like that and also you can't be uh, you don't lose any casting time from melee damage in this I've never really noticed that so much as uh, because I usually use it when I'm getting absolutely owned and need to heal myself up really quickly and reduce my damage and whatnot. Anyway, so that is the discipline tree. Now we move on to the uh, ten points. Is it um, eight points? Sorry, eight points that you have left to spend over if you take my tree. And you do not want to go into shadow. There's uh, I would really love to go into shadow because then I get twisted fate faith which means I wouldn't have to get any hit rating because it would be all in my spirit you could also get um, a lesser cooldown on your psychic screen which is your AOE fear and that would be absolutely amazing if I could go into the shadow tree unfortunately I can't because we have a spell that we are pretty much dependent on in the holy tree and I'll go over that okay so in the holy tree you want to get three out of three on empowered healing which increases the healing done by your flash heal, heal, and binding heal, and greater heal by 15%, and 15% again is nothing to uh, turn your nose at, it's pretty decent healing. And then I also get improved renew, which increases the amount healed by your renew spell. I like to put renew and presence of mind, uh, no, presence of mending in a macro, so then I press it, and then it gives me presence of mending, uh, prayer of mending, sorry, don't know why I was saying presence. And then I can also press it for Renew as well. So I use, start using Renew and uh, present, uh, Prayer of Mending. So, yeah. That's why I have that talent. Um, you can also get Divine Fury for your 5 points. Which reduces the casting time of your Smite, Holy Fire, Heal and Greater Heal. This still doesn't make it worth it to go for the whole Smite, Holy Fire talents. Still definitely does not do that. However, if you do use Great Heal, as I mentioned before, this is definitely the talent for you because it means faster greater, greater heals by quite a significant amount. So definitely get that if you start using Great Heal. Okay, now we go into Tier 2 of the Holy Tree. This is why you go into the Holy Tree, not the Shadow. Desperate Prayer instantly heals the caster for 30% of their total health. This is an absolute lifesaver. We don't have many of these. We don't have any of these except for that. That is our absolute lifesaver. That's the only problem I find with Discipline Priest. We have um, spells to reduce the amount of damage taken or absorb damage, but we have nothing to instantly give us health. And so this is why we go into this tree, so we can get that. Now, you can also combine this with um, a trinket. Do I still have it in my inventory? Yes, I do. The uh, Emblem of Tenacity, which increases your total amount of health. And if you use this, it equates to more about 40% healing. So again, that is that's pretty worth it. Uh, me personally, I use a mana 
trinket, but I'll get into that in a later episode. So, you got that, and then I would say um, skip Surge of Light, because you don't really want to be running on chance. Basically, Surge of Light gives you a 6% chance when casting pretty much any heal except for Penance for your next Flash of Light to be instant cast and cost no mana. The only problem with this is, is it's completely random and you sort of don't want to rely on it being random because if it doesn't pop up, then you're pretty much screwed. However, I would go for Inspiration, which reduces your target's physical damage taken by 10%. So, if you, uh, whatever, after you give them a critical heal from your flash heal, greater heal, blah, 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 blah. This is especially great against warriors and DKs and all those melee attacks, and, you know, feral druids, who are actually pretty powerful this season, especially um, warriors versus disc priests are extremely powerful, so this is one hell of a talent to have because it will reduce their damage that you take. It will reduce, reduce the damage that you take from them. Okay, I got that right. Okay. So that's basically the spec that I go for. You can uh, copy off the spec if you want. It's a very nice spec to have. Uh, it works for me, so it might work for you. Anyway, let's go into the glyphs. Okay, for prime glyphs, we have Glyph of Flash Heal, which increases the critical effect chance of your flash heal on targets at or below 25% health by 10%. So this increases the chance that you're going to crit on someone who has like, I don't know, uh, 13k health. You know, that's when they need a crit heal because they need to get that much HP. So that's why I have that for precautionary reasons. Next, I have Glyph of Powered Shield, which is where your Powered Shield also heals the target for 20% of the absorption amount. So if I have a shield that absorbs 22k, I will get around a 4.5k heal. This heal can also crit, and it's just a little nice heal to put on people after you put the shield on them. It's uh, just one of those little things, little heals, that you know adds up to something big. And last, probably the most important glyph, is reduced... Uh, Sorry, Glyph of Penance, which reduces the cooldown of Penance by 2 seconds. Originally, Penance is on a 12 second cooldown, now it's on a 10 second cooldown. And Penance is pretty much your best ability that you have. Reason why is because it gives the target instantly 3 Grace stacks, which increase the healing that they receive from you. And also, it heals for about the same amount as a um, Flash Heal but it costs significantly less mana. See, this only costs 2,800 mana. My flash heal costs 5,700, so that's about a three, 3k difference you know, in mana, so it's definitely worth it reducing the cooldown on that. Okay, going on to Major Glyphs. First, we have Glyph of Desperation, which is definitely something you definitely need to get. This is like no, no optional here. You can't choose to have this or not to have this, you need this because it allows you to cast Pain Suppression while you are stunned. Now this is amazing because most classes like a Paladin or a Warrior they will Hammer of Justice you or throw down you and then pop all of their deadly cooldowns. So you want to be able to use Pain Suppression while they've got you in one of those stun locks so it's definitely important to have this. Next, another one that you definitely want to have is um, Glyph of Master Spell which reduces the cast time of your Master Spell by one second and basically this means that if a paladin is about to bubble or just bubbled then you can do your master spell really quickly the chances are that it's going to get interrupted is fairly slim I have seen it happen quite a few times though and it means that you can get the bubble off instantaneously which is amazing you definitely need this last one I have is glyph of inner fire which increases the armor gained from your inner fire spell by 50% now this is simply for um, melee classes, obviously. It just means that, that, that I take less damage from them, and melee classes are the one thing that I have troubles with in arenas, so that's generally why I use this glyph, so then I can defend myself more. Now, you don't you don't want to change glyph of master spell, glyph of Desp uh, desperation, or glyph of penance. The other three are optional. You can change them. I've seen people use glyph of renew, glyph of... Uh, Shadow word, uh, shadow word death. You know, people use other glyphs. Just try out glyphs. Look for which ones that seem cool to you, and use those. But this is what I run with, and it generally works. So yeah, this has been episode one. Next, I will bring out um, macros, probably maybe keybinds, and probably some item I, I know I'm gonna say that itemization. Did I get that right? Yeah, I'm sure I got that right. Anyway, guys, see you all next time.